Hi folks, Kevin here. How you doing today? Well, it's March 11th and I've been working on a project since March 1st uh, and this is one that I really was looking forward to sharing with you. Uh, why am I looking forward to sharing with you? Well, I wanted to show you how we're growing our microgreens. And why is that important? Well, I think each and every one of you can actually produce good, healthy, nutritional food in your own home during the worst times of year. Even if you live in a studio apartment, this is one thing you can take control over. So I'm always talking about permaculture and homesteading. Those are things that I'm very interested in, things you can do on a, on a much larger scale. However, there's many folks out there who are just starting off and I think one way that you can ensure a better quality of life is to really focus on your health and that's having to do with nutrition. Now, I haven't produced many videos yet on nutrition and they'll probably be coming next winter. Uh, I'll be going full time in the garden area and doing con construction over this summertime. But I decided on March 1st, let me at least see if I can get the GoPro camera out, that little camera down there, and see if I can record the progress of the microgreens that we're growing. Now, we're not growing the typical microgreens that most people you're going to see on YouTube are growing. Uh, you know, the sprouted peas, I mean the, the peas, the sunflower, I've grown those, they're absolutely fantastic. But I wanted to get the greatest value for our health, and that's the nutrition. And so therefore we chose the cruciferous vegetables, namely the broccoli, because of sulforaphane. Uh, a potent nutrient, and I won't go over too much of it, but at this point and I will leave a link to some nutritional information on our website in the description below but without any further ado uh, without holding up any longer I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what it looks like here then hopefully that GoPro took some time-lapse photo so let me just switch the camera for a second okay there's a shot of the GoPro camera uh, back on the end over here and that's been taking a picture every 60 seconds for the last 11 days. These are the microgreens that you're going to see in the in the video. Uh, the microgreens ended up turning out pretty well. However, on the fourth, I started a second seed tray, and you see there's there's not much difference between the the actual growth that's there. And the difference is that I actually purposely tried to do this without any cover on it. So these weren't kept in the shade and they certainly had more evaporation to the soil surface. I water all of my microgreens twice a day here and there's a fan that blows on them as well. Uh, so these, these ones were started on uh, March 4th and these ones were started three days ago. And I just uncovered these ones this morning. So you won't see much green because they're just starting to green up and so it's been about two hours and uh, they're just starting to get a little bit of green. By tomorrow morning at this time they'll be completely green. And uh, these ones will probably mature, come to complete maturity, ready to harvest in about seven or eight days as opposed to the 11 days down here. So keeping them covered and you'll see uh, I think that I show that in the GoPro sh shots. I haven't uh, taken the camera down yet, but today's the day, and I think I recorded harvesting them. And if not, I'll, I'll show uh, images of that in the future. So for growing my microgreens, and you can use a whole variety of things. You can use old plastic materials, uh, you know, something that your mushrooms come in, or you could use basically even an egg carton uh, with soilless mixture to grow microgreens in your house. There's a whole variety of ways, and I've gone over in the past how we've used uh, quart jars to, to grow uh, sprouts as well, and there's certainly high nutrient density in growing things in your sprouts, uh, in quart jars for your sprouts. So there's just a couple of components to make my uh, microgreens uh, seed starting uh, go quickly and easily. I use a piece of one inch um, rough cut hemlock, or this is pine, sorry, 
one by 10 inches, so it's 10 inches wide, which fits just nice and e easily inside of the seed starting flat with just a little bit of play. I use some uh, old two by two pieces attached to this to make it so I got a nice handle. I have a hole drilled in it so I can hang it on the wall when not in use. So now the soilless mixture goes right into this shallow uh, perforated uh, seed uh, flat. Now it's perforated so that when I water it, it drains out, but since I, uh, we live in a house and we don't want the, the moisture draining forever in our sink uh, or dripping on the floor, we use a, a catchment uh, seed flat, which is a standard thickness, much thicker than, much higher, the, the height of the, of the flat is, is more than twice as high, a little over two inches thick. It's non-perforated. You can't, you cannot see through it. Maybe that looks like you can see through it on the video, but you can't. Uh, so this will hold the water that drains from the actual microgreen flat here. Now this one sits inside of a, just basically it's it's a uh, tray support. So it's a seed flat support that's used in in uh, in greenhouses or seed starting hoop houses and all. So. That support goes in there, and first I'll go ahead and load my my flat. So I'm, first I'm spreading out about a half inch thick of this soilless seed starting mix, meaning that there's no organic life uh, in it, no, no microbes in this. Uh, however, there is organic material and perlite. In this particular mix, it, uh, the organic material is uh, peat moss. And I use my little board here just to get myself all the way around to the edges and press down because this nice compressed flat uh, seed starting area makes it much easier to uh, moisturize this and then get see where the seeds actually are. So there aren't any divots to fill in, so that's good enough for now. I'll just set this back on top of there. And so that flat's ready to go ahead and start my, my microgreens. Okay, I brought the uh, seed flat uh, for the microgreens inside of the house now in the kitchen sink area. I'm going to remove the, uh, the piece of uh, hemp, uh, pine board which really compresses the seed flat. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and give this a good soaking. So often I'll go ahead and water this two or three times. I'll do a couple of chores, come back. If, I, if I'm gone five minutes and I water it again, uh, the peat moss, the organic, uh, the, the humus material there will have absorbed the water uh, necessary. And it really is important that the seeds get a good soaking uh, beforehand. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it one more time with water right now. trying not to make a big mess in the kitchen, but I always make a little bit of a mess. So 
So water is going to drain through the, the flat, but as you can see, it's only a small amount of water there now, and I can start to feel the weight of the soilless mixture inside of this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seed it with my broccoli seeds. For years before growing uh, the microgreens, uh, which I prefer over doing the uh, sprouting, we did lots of sprouting and there are many different uh, cruciferous and legumes that we sprouted. And they're all very uh, nutritional. However, this has uh, the, there's potentially nearly a hundred times as much sulforaphane uh, available to us as we consume these microgreens and we eat these in wraps every single day. Uh, you can have them on you know taco salads and, and sandwiches, a whole variety of ways uh, to get these into your uh, into your system and it's the bioactive uh, form uh, th that you're going to get. If you're going to be cooking broccoli unfortunately unless you add mustard seed or you or you do some other uh, techniques that I mentioned in the website article, you're not going to get the full potential benefit of, of what you're going to get when you're doing the microgreens or the sprouts. So now I've got it set like this. The seeds are distributed. Let me actually see, can I get to a close-up of this? I wonder if you can see this, the seed density. It's pretty much distributed very similarly. I'm reluctant to move the camera. Okay, now I'm going to water it because I want to get those seeds really soaked. The water's coming out a little bit too harsh. Let's stop that for a second. I need one more of the shallow seed flats to complete the process for starting these seeds. So now that I've got the seeds uh, on top of the soilless mixture, that has been compacted down very well. The seeds have very good contact with the soilless mixture. The soilless mi mixture was pre-wetted significantly and I wetted it on top of the seeds themselves. So there's a very good chance that I'll have a high germination rate, especially in the warm, uh, in our warm house. But the thing that I did differently so that you could see it, I actually left the seed cover off so you could see the actual germination in the video. Uh, that it does not work nearly as well as by protecting it. I don't know that they need to be in the dark. They certainly don't need the weight. Some people have put in their videos uh, on it. When I compare them side to side with the, without the weight on top of it, uh, maybe that does encourage more uh, direct seed contact with the compressed soil, and that actually helps. But the weight doesn't seem to make any difference because I can put different weights on these on these seed flats, and it makes no difference whatsoever. However, slowing the evaporation or transpir not transpiration but the evaporation of the soil surface really does and since I have a fan in there and we have a very warm house having just this seed cover over the top of it now I could put, I used to put it this way but when I put it that way I get some of the seeds as it started sprouting adhered to the uh, bottom surface of this tray so I just put them this way 
Uh, you can see that they grow up pretty darn well. I let them get about an inch high and then I remove the uh, seed cover and let them start uh, you know, taking the benefit of the uh, artificial lighting and start photosynthesis. So I hope that this video is helpful to you in taking uh, ownership of your own health and actually growing some, some uh, fresh, nutritious vegetables that are potent nutrients uh, in your own home that you can feed to your, to your family throughout the year. Um, whether you're in a hot climate, whether you live in a, in a studio apartment, no matter where you live, you can do work like this. Now, I'm using a, a, a stand system, and when I ultimately remodel our kitchen area, that's gonna be incorporated into our new kitchen design, where I'm actually gonna be able to grow a microgreen center within the design. It's part of our, our, our plans for changing that for the future and hopefully someday I'll, I'll make available uh, some of the design systems that I've implemented here on sites to make life a little bit easier, more practical, more user friendly. And again, take ownership of our own health. So if this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day. And remember, you own it, so take care of it. Thank you.